Good morning, my dear students. Today we will start the second semester of Class Six Geography. In this part, we are going to study about three chapters: water bodies, minerals, and North America. In the previous classes, means in our first semester, we finished two chapters: map study, and the second chapter was our land. So in that chapter, I told you that it's a part of realms of the earth. So there are four realms of earth. They are lithosphere, all the land mass; hydrosphere, all the water bodies; atmosphere, air; and biosphere, where the life exists. We can see biosphere. So in this class, in your sixth class, we are studying about two realms of the earth. The first one is land forms, lithosphere, which we have already finished. Now in this semester we are going to study about the second realm of our earth that is hydrosphere or water bodies. So in this realm we will study about different types of water bodies. The important water bodies are oceans, seas, rivers, lakes, etc. So here in this chapter we will start with oceans and then we will study about different types of seas, then the lakes, rivers, etc. So here. Now we will uh, start with what are the third portion is main features of the water body. What are the main features? So in this part of our uh, chapter, we will study about what are the features of our water bodies and uh, how they, uh, that hydrological cycle, how uh, they changes their geographical position and their physical state and how it is just circulated throughout the earth always means uh, sometimes we can see this water on the land as rivers sometimes they become clouds and go up and then they will come out come down as precipitation in the form of precipitation rainfall sleet um, uh, snowfall etc so in this uh, part of our chapter that is our first part of our chapter we are going to discuss about three important points the first one is what are the realms of the earth the second one is about the water bodies, what are the different types of water bodies and the third portion is what are the main features of our water bodies. So now we move to the next part of our video where you can see a powerpoint presentation. So we will move to the next part. Let's continue with the powerpoint presentation of chapter third water bodies. The earth. Both land and water bodies make the surface of the earth. The outermost solid cover of the earth is called lithosphere. The water bodies are called hydrosphere. The large land masses are called continents and they are seven in number. The large water bodies are called oceans. So this is a general introduction of our chapter. Now we will move to the next part of our chapter that is water bodies. A water body is any significant accumulation of water on the surface of the earth. The earth is called a watery planet. It is also called a blue planet because of the presence of water. Nearly 71% of its surface is covered with water. Water is a source of drinking water for human beings and animals. They also sustain all aquatic life. Aquatic life means marine life or life that we can see in water. The term water body often refers to oceans, seas, bay, gulf, lake, rivers, streams, canals and other geographical features. Water body consists of water on and below the surface of the earth. So the water body doesn't mean that it's just the water which we can see on the earth that is sea water, river water or lake. The underwater is also a part of it. The ocean accounts about 71% of the earth like continent all oceans and seas are interconnected. There is a continuous interchange of water between the ocean atmosphere and land and it is called hydrological cycle or water cycle. The ocean furnish water vapor for most of the rain. Water is used for drinking, cultivation of crops, running industries and various other purpose. 
so these are the main important features of water bodies the other important features are water is essential for life and it is the essence of life water cycle is a single process by which all the three realms of the earth that is lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere that means land air and water comes in contact water always remains its level this level of water is called sea level so the height of a place is always calculated according to the sea level or taking sea level as the base we usually calculate the height of a mountain height of a land mass etc because water level of the sea is always constant because water in the, uh, on the earth surface is in the connected the water flows into river or goes underground or back to the ocean this process is called water cycle and because of this circulation water exists in three forms that is solid liquid and gaseous form or in the form of gas so the usually we say that uh, the hydrological cycle is the interchange of water geographical or changing its geographical position and changing its physical state we call it as hydrological cycle or water cycle we can see a picture of it here uh, the water uh, from the ocean evaporates the uh, ocean water it's in liquid form it evaporates and become gas it goes up due to con during the time of condensation it changes into solid stage and again during precipitation it comes down in the form of rainfall or um, snowfall etc so here always water is in a continuous change again it flows and comes back to the ocean then it evaporates again it goes up so such a circle is there that we call it as water cycle or hydrological cycle so here we end the first part of our chapter and in the next video we will discuss about the oceans thank you